So when I first moved to Tampa, Pastor Aaron um, had me leading the Radiant Kids area. Um, he gave me a couple Bibles and a hallway and said, lead the kids. So I, we did with what we had, and I didn't know back then how it was going to work, but to see where we've come in five years is just incredible. You know, we talk about, you know, the church is exploding and things are, people are getting saved and all these things, and it almost feels like it happened overnight, but really we know, and you know, I've had the privilege to watch over the years for Pastor Aaron and Katie that this has been years of being faithful and years of saying yes to God, uh, even in the small things that nobody sees. Uh, you know, when nobody was cheering them on, when Radiant Church wasn't a church yet, um, there they were saying yes and being faithful and sowing those seeds. And, um, you know, I know that Radiant is what it is today because of those yeses in the beginning. I know that we've gotten to a, a point now as a church where we've grown bigger and we have a lot of people, but he notices when people aren't here or if people maybe have not been here for a couple of weeks, he'll write us and say, hey, have you talked to so-and-so? I haven't seen him in a couple of weeks. Let's just check on him and make sure and that they're doing okay. And I think that's awesome because I don't know how many pastors really take the time to notice things like that, but Pastor Aaron really loves this church. He loves the people that come here. It's just so cool to see his heart for the people that are getting connected at Radiant, just seeing how much he believes and is driven by seeing people go through next steps and discovering their purpose and finding their passion and fulfilling their purpose within the church and serving in the church. And so I love being a part of that. and. Um, his vision and his drive for it just inspires me every single day. I can honestly say that my life has been changed because of Pastor Aaron. He encourages me to dream big, to see the best in people, and to take big steps of faith. Pastor Aaron, thank you for allowing me to be a part of your dream. God has done such incredible things in my life personally because of his leadership, because of his faithfulness, to come and take the dream that God had placed in his life. And because of that, his faithfulness through that decision, I ended up meeting my wife. I ended up being a part of what I believe is the greatest church. Uh, I've been able to, to come on staff here at Radiant and serve alongside of him and Katie and the vision of what they're doing. I thank you for believing in me. Um, even when I didn't believe in myself all the time, you've always believed in me. You've always given me confidence, uh, even when I didn't have it. And I thank you for being a great friend, a great mentor, and a great pastor in my life. So I'm just so thankful for you. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it hadn't been for Pastor Aaron seeing the potential in a 15-year-old messed up girl. And so thank you, Pastor Aaron, for all you do, for all you've done for Radiant, all you do for me and my personal life. Pastor Aaron, thank you so much just for your continued belief in me and for just the opportunities that you've given me to grow as a leader. I'm so thankful for you and that you're my pastor, that you're one of my friends, and just I thank God for you. And honestly, on behalf of Radiant Church, we all know that we would not be here sitting in this auditorium attending Radiant Church if it weren't for the grace of God and your willingness to step out in faith. So thank you for believing in something that did not even exist yet so that all of our lives could be changed. And with all of that said, come on Radiant Church, let's all stand to our feet and welcome our pastor, Pastor Aaron Burke to the stage to bring the finale of Asking for a Friend. You guys are too nice. Thank you guys so much. You can be seated. You can be seated. Thank you so much. And it is the joy of my life and Katie's life, I know, to uh, be able to lead here at Radiant Church. And we just have so much fun. You're the greatest church in America. And um, we love you guys so much. Thanks for all the cards. Thanks for all the little things for baby Elise at three weeks old. I mean, it's just that one of my favorite things about being here is not even the fact that I get to lead the staff. It's that my kids get to grow up at Radiant Church and they get to be part of our amazing kids ministry and what God's doing here. And, and I would be presumptuous and bizarre and arrogant to think that I do this all alone because honestly, the best thing about our church is that we are led by a group of pastors who do an incredible job. So can you take a second at every location right now at St. Pete downtown? Can we honor our pastors here at Radiant Church. We love you guys. 
men and women who are lead us with excellence and pray for you guys and care for y'all so much. You guys are the best of the best. Well, I'm super excited. It's been a couple weeks, and I am ready to bring you the finale of our series called Asking for a Friend. If I haven't got a chance to meet you yet, my name is Aaron, and I'd love to get to know you. We get to know people more at our Next Steps class. There's one available right after this service, and I know St. Pete's going on right now, and there's a lot of different opportunities for that. But man, we are just pumped that you're here with us and all of our guests at every location. You could have done anything with your time but you decided to come to church. So Radiant, one more time. Can we make our guests feel loved one more time today? It's awesome. So the way we did this series is we actually had you submit questions on Easter, and then we compiled it and kind of got some of the top questions, and we've talked about some serious topics I'll talk about in just a second, but we also get questions all the time about church. Uh, you're from different backgrounds, and today being Baptism Sunday, and we're baptizing people at every location and every service. Um, there's some questions about baptism, and some of these were submitted, and I think they were good asking for a friend questions. Questions like this, like, is the water triple reverse osmosis filtered? So um, I don't even know what that means. It's definitely someone from South Tampa that's asking that question. And uh, no, it's not, okay? Uh, here's another good question you're probably wondering. Is there a radiant location? that does baptisms in a jacuzzi. Kind of warm it up a little bit, but um, no, there's not that. But if you want to buy us one, that'd be a lot of fun to do that. Uh, here's another question. Ladies, I know you've asked this one. If you're having a great hair day, is there any way just to get lightly sprinkled? Come on, ladies. You know what I mean? Um, and no, there's not. We got to dunk you all the way into the water. And then this last one, uh, kind of inappropriate. I don't know what parent asked this one. They said, if my teenager gets baptized, can you hold them down just a little bit longer? So, not okay. We don't believe in that here at Radiant. Uh, but actually, in this whole idea, we've been answering some big questions for you. Questions like, like how, why am I not happy? And we dealt with issues of depression and dealt with issues of suicide, huge questions. And then how do I experience peace in my life? And why do I pray? And talk about the theology of prayer. And why do we even pray? And it's an important message. And then my pastor preached a couple weeks ago on the why try, the sowing and reaping. Why do we even try anymore? And then last week we had our location pastors at St. Pete and downtown preach unbelievable messages. And Pastor David Steele did a great job here. Can we honor those? that, just, that, that They preached great words last week on why do we forgive? And today I want to talk to you about a subject that, that is so huge, and it's, it's actually taken me weeks to, to, to compile and to get ready for this one sermon, because it's such a big sermon and a big topic that we need to understand it all and kind of get on the same page, because there's a lot of confusion. But let me tell you why there's confusion. There's confusion because Radiant Church is a real melting pot of a lot of different denominations. I know a lot of you guys maybe grew up in Catholic or Lutheran or Baptist backgrounds, and, and then they come to Radiant, and kind of, we're kind of a home for everybody, so they all kind of come together, and, and we celebrate that. We, we laugh a lot. Now, you got a lot of preconceived ideas based on your denominational upbringing if you're raised in the church. And So before I get into the message, I thought we'd laugh a little bit today. Are we okay laughing in church? Yeah, yeah, so we're going to laugh a little bit today, and I put together a little, little bit I'm calling here today of, of how many Christians does it take to change a light bulb, and I'll just kind of explain the denominations this way for you guys, and, and don't get offended, it's just funny, okay? All right, first one is our charismatic friends. You guys, how many? It only takes one because their hands are already in the air, amen? <laughs> how about our Pentecostal friends? It only takes 10 because one to change the light bulb and nine to pray against the spirit of darkness. It's true. How about our Presbyterian friends? I know you're in here. There, it takes none because lights will go on and off at predestined times. <laughs> Roman Catholic friends, we love you guys. How about this? It's none because it's candles only for the Roman Catholics. <laughs> now this one I know is true, and, and you've probably experienced it too. Our Baptist friends, it takes 15 because one to change the light bulb and three committees to approve the change and decide who brings the potato salad. And that's true. <laughs> a couple more Episcopalians, you guys. It takes three, one to call the electrician, one to mix the drinks, and one to talk about how much better the old one was. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, how about this one? It, it's, a, it's funny, and just, just laugh. Uh, the Lutherans, none, because Lutherans don't believe in change. <laughs> I thought that was great. All right, a couple more. Now, our Jehovah Witness friends there, it takes three. One to screw in the bulb and two to knock on your door and ask, have you seen the light? 
And then I'll end it with this one. You gotta, you gotta love our Amish friends. How many Amish does it take to change a light bulb? And theirs is simply, what's a light bulb? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all right. So we all come from different backgrounds. We all have a lot of fun. And because of that, we all have a different kind of take on this subject. So we're gonna kind of clear the air over the few minutes that we have together. And I wanna answer a question that's important to your life. Whether you know it or not, it's very important. So I want you to take some notes. And it's simply this Who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? You hear about this, this Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, depending on what situation you grew up in, and it's kind of this mystical, get goosebumps idea, and depending on the background, you, there's kind of different views of this idea of the Holy Spirit. There's the one extreme, which um, I got to experience a little bit growing up, which was like, man, the Holy Spirit was, his whole job was to be a glorified kind of ghost writer of the Bible. So he's behind the scenes, he writes the Bible, when the Bible's completed, he basically has nothing else to do now except to just roam the earth and see how awesome it is that people are reading the Bible. And there's a whole group that loves that, and, and so I remember going to my grandmother's church, and she, they, they were a part of a group, that they were the frozen chosen. I mean, they were just like, they never moved, they were just sitting in that service, and there's always 15 to 18 in this little, little Baptist church on the back roads of Mississippi, and I remember experiencing it. We would go in there, and, and they loved the Father, and they loved the Son, and they loved the Holy Scriptures, like that was it. And, and I remember experiencing that. There was no life there. And then we would go from that experience to my aunt's church. And this is true. My aunt's church, they, they had the Holy Ghost. They were, they were a little wild. And I remember going there. And this was in the, kind of the backwoods of Louisiana. And uh, we would visit, me and my brother and sisters, we would love to visit this church. Because it was always wild. Like, you'd sit there and just watch about 150 people packed in this little room. And, and the music would get going. And they would start, like, bouncing. Man, they were just excited. And then they, the music would get faster and faster and faster. And, and then, true story, when the music got to, like, the peak, someone would, like, get the Holy Ghost. And they would get out of their seat. And they'd start running. Not in place. They start running around the auditorium. And you'd see these people. And let me tell you, health is not, like, a priority for the Louisiana people, okay? So... It was, it was a difficult run around that auditorium, but they made it happen, and they got sweat going, and it's, it's old, you know, crawfish etouffee coming out, and they're having a good time, and me and my brother and sisters, we would sit there and just watch them. Who's going to run next? Who's going to run? Then we started betting each other. Hey, you go now. It's your turn. You take a lap. No, 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 you take a lap. We'd rock, paper, scissor it, and whoever would lose, they'd have to take a lap around the church, and... The pastor was always like, man, those Burke kids, they got the Holy Ghost. No, we were as pagan as can be. <laughs> we had fun, though. So which one's right? Which one's, wh wh who is the Holy Spirit? We need to answer this question to really kind of help settle it in your life. And actually, the person that answers it best is Jesus himself. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the scriptures. And Jesus, on the night that he's betrayed, he's been doing ministry for three years. If you're unfamiliar with the scriptures, let me just give you a little background. He's been, he's God in the flesh, came dwelt among people, lived, and, and raised up these disciples. And for three years, these, him and 12 guys have been doing ministry all over. These guys were fishermen and tax collectors and normal businessmen, heathens that God called to do something great. And then the night he's betrayed, he gathers them in an upper room. They're sitting at a large table, and you know the, the story, and Da Vinci's on one side, and he's painting the picture of them. And no, that didn't happen. But as he's sitting there, he's telling them his kind of a last will and testament. And, and if you want to know what Jesus said to his disciples the night before he was crucified, it's actually found in the Bible, in the book of John. So if you have your Bible today, I want you to flip it open. We're going to look at it. If you have your iPhones or whatever it is that you're going to look at the scriptures, I want you to actually see this because it's found in the book of John chapter 14. So we have the whole transcript of what Jesus said to his disciples in John 14, 15, and 16. So what would be the most important thing that Jesus would tell his disciples before he left the earth? And he focuses on one topic during that time, and he focused on a topic that you need to know about, because the disciples probably felt like you do a lot of times. They had given their lives to Jesus, and then all of a sudden, he's gone. And maybe you've had that experience. You got baptized today, and then all of a sudden, you leave here, and you're like, I'm alone. I'm by myself. How am I supposed to do life? And Jesus had an answer for it. So to comfort these disciples, he talked about and introduced who the Holy Spirit is. So while you have denominational confusion, the scriptures are not confused. So let me help you figure out who the Holy Spirit is and how it applies to your life. The first one is simply this. It's found in John 14, and it will start in verse 16. I want you to look at it and look what it says. He says, and I, talking about Jesus, will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. Say advocate. All right, and this advocate's going to help you 
and be with you forever. So where Jesus was leaving, he says, I'm going to give you an advocate. Now, you need to know what the word advocate is. It's a Greek word for the word parakletos. And here's what it means. It means one that comes alongside to help. In other words, they understood that Jesus walked alongside of them and helped them. And Jesus says, I'm not going to just give you an advocate. I'm going to give you another advocate. Just like I did to you, you're going to be able to have me with you at all times. The benefit of the Holy Spirit is what Jesus could do with three or 12 people. The Holy Spirit can do with everybody. He can walk alongside your life and be an advocate to help. And then he describes the role of the Holy Spirit. He says he's the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. And I want your, I want your attention up here. Because you, you know who he is. Because you felt that tug in your heart. You knew when you shouldn't have done that sin. You felt that pull and you go, oh, I shouldn't do that. You're going to realize that's the Holy Spirit's involvement. You at church today... What woke you up and got you here? I want you to know. That was the Holy Spirit. You, you know him. You're going you're gonna to have a light bulb moment over the next few minutes and realize, oh, the Holy Spirit's been involved the whole time. He's been involved in your life. You know him. And because he's, he's with you and he will be, what? shout it out loud, what? In you. He'll be in you. He can live inside of you. So we have three things that we see throughout John 14, 15, and 16 that we see is the role of the Holy Spirit in our life. And I want to present them to you today. The first one is right there since the fact that we know him that we can know him as our advocate, then he is the Holy Spirit, he is our our friend. He's the Holy Spirit, our friend. Because a friend comes alongside and helps. I don't know if you have good friends, you need them. If you don't have some good ones, you can get them here at Radiant. But um, I have good friends, and I know I have good friends because when I'm in need and I need help, they're there for me. Many of them have got a call at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, 5 or 6 in the morning, and for some reason I have an issue where I like to see how low that needle can go on my car when it comes to my gas gauge. I don't know why I do it. It's just, it's a sickness. I need to get free. And and, and for some reason, I realized long ago that E doesn't mean E. You can actually go way below E. It's amazing. I don't know why they did that. I thought E meant E. But then I realized, oh, you can just ride the line all the way down. It's just awesome. So let it go further and further down the line until one day, you know, what happens? Uh, it breaks down. And, and it's the, the running joke of all my friends. How many times have you picked a baron in the last few months, you know? And so it's always like, hey, I'm on the side of the Selman. Can you come and get me? And they're like, you're like, you're crazy. And all these people are driving by like, hey, there's my pastor, you know? <laughs> and what is a good friend do? A good friend, when you're in the time of help, need, they walk alongside of you and they help you. And I want you to know that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do for you. He, he doesn't want to leave you alone in that business. You're, you're in that marriage, and you get frustrated. You're like, I can't do this alone. Of course you can't. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. You, you're not supposed to do your finances alone. You're not supposed to raise kids alone. We have a helper that's supposed to come alongside of us in our time of need, and he wants to be your friend. Actually, the Apostle Paul said it this way. He, By the way, the, the idea of the Trinity This is all three members of the Trinity in one verse. This happens about five or six times in the scriptures. Here's one of them. It says it like this in 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The amazing grace of the master, Jesus Christ, that's the son, the extravagant love of the God, that's the father, and the intimate, what does he say? Friendship of the Holy Spirit. There's the Holy Spirit right there. You have all three members of of the Trinity in one, and what does he describe the Holy Spirit as? Your friend. He wants to be close to you. He wants to be near you. And here's why. Because write it down in your notes. Because God never designed you to do life away from him. So if you always feel like you're struggling, you always feel like you can't get ahead, it's because you're trying to live life away from God. And God never designed you to live that way. He said it like this. A few verses later in uh, John 14, he, Jesus says, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. And I think a lot of people in here, or you're watching at St. Pete and your experiences, and you feel like an orphan. You feel disconnected. You go, I don't know God. I don't have a connection with God. No, he says, I'm going to come to you. And God coming to man in today's age is through the Holy Spirit. When you feel God in your life and you feel that pull to give your life to Christ, that's the Holy Spirit. He wants to be your friend. Can I get a good amen today? All right, number two, it says it like this. The verse goes on in chapter 14, verse 26. It says, the advocate, there he is, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you. Say teach. All right, he's going to teach you, and he's not going to teach you some things. He's going to teach you what? All things, and will remind you of everything I have said to you. I don't know about you, but I need a good reminder at times. I don't get it the first time. You're sitting next to a spouse, and come on, somebody knows. They need reminders of anniversaries and reminders of birthdays, and we need reminders in our life because we are easily, we easily forget. 
So God knew that his, his people would need reminders, reminders of how to live and how to do marriage and how to raise our kids. We need reminders of how to raise our, use our finances. So he gave us the Holy Spirit, and here's the Holy Spirit's second role. It's simply that he's our teacher. That he's here to teach you. That he's here to help and l- teach you some lessons. Listen, he's your friend because you need help, but he's your teacher because you need to grow. I'm going to say that again. He's your friend because you need help, but he's your teacher because you need to grow. You're not where you need to be yet. You still have a growth path ahead of you. So we need a teacher to teach us some lessons. Now, my problem growing up is that I didn't learn the lessons I was supposed to learn. I was what you would call growing up a difficult child. I don't know if you have any of those or you were one of those. I lived in what we call detention a lot. And, and so I felt so bad for all of my teachers growing up. We, we just had a lot of problems and a lot of issues because I was always fighting the teacher. And I didn't realize that my ability and my desire to fight the teacher directly affected my ability to learn the lessons that that teacher wanted me to learn. So I, because I didn't honor the teacher, I didn't celebrate the teacher, I, I never learned the lesson. So I didn't learn geometry because I didn't get along with my geometry teacher. And I never really learned history because I didn't like my history teacher. So I had these personal conflicts where I wouldn't learn from the teacher. And here's, the, here's what I want you to understand, that if you fight the teacher, you're never going to really learn the lesson. I think a lot of people are frustrated. They're like, Aaron, I'm on this cycle. And I don't learn the lesson, and I don't know why it is. It's because the Holy Spirit is trying to teach you something, but you're not learning from him. You're not being obedient to him. And why do you keep getting the same issue over and over and over again? Because you're fighting the teacher that God gave us in our life. Now, let me do something. Because I have the microphone, and I have an audience that watches this online also. Because I know that there is a lot of teachers around America today that were involved in my life from elementary school in Louisiana to middle school and high school in Pensacola, that they prematurely had gray hair, they quit, they, uh, their whole life fell apart because they had a problem child named Aaron Burke in their, in their school. So I want to publicly just do something I've never done. I want to apologize to them. I want you to know, keep, keep helping difficult kids because guess what? They're either going to end up in prison or they're going to be pastors. Come on, amen. So that's the encouragement for our teachers. But actually, I was praying this through the last couple weeks, and I thought, you know what? There are so many teachers that I had in my life that I need to celebrate them. And I was like, I can't do anything about my past, but we can do something special today. So I'm going to do something we've never done at Radiant Church. I want to honor a group of people in our service that day in and day out, they don't get as much honor as they deserve. They're constantly um, dealing with little Aaron Burks that have a lot of potential but are really problematic and so we want to celebrate you so if at every location if you are a school teacher public private school administration public or private school I want you to do me a favor here Hillsborough County Pinellas County wherever it is I want you to stand to your feet right now and we want to honor you in our service come on give it up for our teachers they're all over they're all over we have a team coming through to give them gifts and gift cards Come on, y'all celebrate our teachers one more time. Got more down here, more in the back. Isn't that awesome that you get some gift cards, some, uh, just a, some free stuff? We love you guys. Paid for by the generosity of Radiant Church. Hey, Radiant, give it up for our teachers one more time. So you got to understand that the Holy Spirit is called to be that teacher in your life. So here's a word. It's not in your notes, but I want you to write it down. Here's how I've learned to submit to the teacher, the Holy Spirit. When it comes to my life every day, it's this word called yield. Write it down. Y-I-E-L-D. Now, you might not know what yield means, but you've probably seen this sign somewhere. It's called a yield sign. And what you did is you saw it, and you thought it was a cool suggestion. (laughs) And you just blown right past it because we don't know what it means. And here's what yield actually means. A yield sign has a definition, and here's the definition. It means to pause and give way. So you don't have to just stop, but you have to have to pause for just a second, and you have to look because something bigger than you might be coming along that, if you're not careful, can take you out. And, if, and so you've got to pause. So you don't understand the yield sign until you miss it one time, and, and you don't realize there was something else trying to happen at that very moment. Now I want your attention up to me. That is exactly what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. 
He wants to move in your life. He wants to speak into that relationship. He wants to help you with your job. He wants to help you in your marriage. But you're driving too stinking fast that you miss the yield sign to slow down, to pause, and give way for the Holy Spirit in your life. And so because you miss the yield sign, your life keeps crashing over and over and over again. Can I encourage you? He wants to teach you, but you got to slow down a little bit. Can we give God a little bit of praise for that? Amen? It's in every area of your life. In, our, in my marriage, I, I know anytime we get in an argument, what do you do? Man, they're so wrong. You're talking about how mad you are at them. Then you finally pray. What happens when you finally pray? You started out with what? Lord, change that person. <laughs> Fix them. But I'll tell you, as soon as I start to yield, you know what it does? And the Lord's like, Aaron, you shouldn't have had that behavior. You shouldn't have talked that way. You shouldn't have responded that way. Aaron, why did you treat your staff that way? Why did you speak that way? Why did you say that one th- phrase in your sermon? You should have slowed down. And what is it? It's the Holy Spirit's way. As soon as I yield, I get the lesson the teacher wanted to teach me. A lot of you guys read your Bibles, and you get frustrated because you don't ever learn anything. You go, my pastor tells me to read my Bible every single day, and I open it up, and I read it, and I don't learn a thing. And here's why you don't learn a thing, because you read it too stinking fast, and you're reading it without the help of the Holy Spirit. So if you just pause, then you can realize what A.W. Tozer says, that the Bible is a supernatural book, and it can be understood only by a supernatural aid so you can't just read it on your own you have to read it and say God speak to me today and when I do this every single morning I pause before I even get into the scriptures and I go God there's something you want to teach me there's somebody you want me to minister to there's something you want to do in my life and watch how when you yield to God he comes through for you in ways you never thought was possible can I get a good amen all right number three and we'll close it out with this one it goes in verse chapter 16 where Jesus is finishing out his talk on the Holy Spirit and he says it is for your good that I am going away How could it be good? It's good because what Jesus could do with one, now the Holy Spirit could do with everyone. He says, unless I go away, the advocate, there he is again, your helper, will not come to you. But if I go, I'm going to send him to you. And when he comes, look what he's going to do. Now, this is a big deal because I want you to see the highlight of what the Holy Spirit does. He says, when he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong. Say wrong. Nobody likes to be proved wrong, do they? Like, no, no, I'm going to do it my way. I, I think my way is better. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he says, no, 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 your way's wrong. The way you're doing that relationship is wrong. The way you're behaving is wrong. He says you're going to prove what's wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. But then he goes on to say, and then when he, the spirit of truth comes, here's what he's going to do. He's going to show you where you're wrong, but look, he's not going to leave you there. You see, that's religion. Religion points to you and says, you're wrong and too bad. But Jesus says, no, you're wrong, and here's the path that the Holy Spirit can take you on to see victory in your life. He's going to lead you into all truth, and what is he going to do? He will not speak on his own. He'll speak out only what he hears, and he'll tell you what is yet to come. And you realize this third one, only the person that knows what is yet to come is simply the Holy Spirit, who is also our God. He's our God. In other words, he is the ruler, the supreme authority over our life. In other words, he's got the driver's seat of your car. So if your car keeps crashing because you keep going into financial issue and divorce after divorce and relationship after relationship and depression after depression and you go, I don't know why this cycle keeps happening. I would submit to you today is that he's not God of your life. You are. Because he's not going to drive a car off of a cliff like you keep driving your car off a cliff. So what is the problem? The problem is you haven't given control over God, to God in your life. And how do we do that? We submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit every single day. And we say, Holy Spirit, how can you use me? How can you change me? How can you flow through me? And watch what happens. People ask me all the time, like, Aaron, is Radiant Church a spirit-filled church? I go, I hope to God we are. What is the other option that we have other than to be led by God himself? Because that's the only path towards success, I believe, on this earth today. So about a year ago, I was in Buddy Brew, and I try to pray a prayer often. And I'm going to give you the prayer when we close. And it's a prayer I pray to submit myself to God in my life. It's a prayer I pray often, because I don't believe experiencing the Holy Spirit is a one-time thing. I think it's all the time, every day. You need it today. So I was sitting in Buddy Brew, and I had this moment where I was just experiencing God. God just convict me and change me and use me. And, And I remember sitting there, and while I was doing some sermon prep and some writing, Two girls from our church walk in 
And I kind of wave at them. They recognize me. I recognize them. I knew who they were. I, I know their background pretty well. And they were going to just hang out. So I was like, I'm not going to bother them. So they're sitting on the other side of the, of the coffee shop. I'm sitting on one side. I'm doing my work. And while I'm sitting there, I'm having the moment with God. I'm praying. And while I'm praying, the Lord says, Aaron, I want to, I want to give you a message for, the, for the, one of those girls. Now, this doesn't happen to me often. I just want you to know, I'm not that weird guy. But, and I didn't hear it, like, audibly. I felt it in my heart. People ask me all the time, like, how do you hear God? Like, it's just that pull in your heart. You know, you're like, it's, 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 it's louder than audio, audible. It's, it's the idea of just, like, it's, it's, it's a pull inside of you. And I felt like, God, you want to do some kind of ministry to them. So one of the girls' name is Kara, and she attends our church, her and her husband. And for years, they had tried to get pregnant and could not get pregnant. I mean, years. First Wednesday after first Wednesday, which is our once a month worship service, they would come down front. And as soon as they come down front, I knew exactly why they're coming to pray. And I was one of the very first always to pray with them. I'd anoint them with oil and pray, and they just wanted so bad. I mean, every time tears joined on their face, I don't know why, we just don't have a baby. And it was a struggle for them. So while they're sitting over there, I was like, God, okay, what, what is the word that you have for them? And as clear as day, the Lord said, you need to tell her she's about to have a child. And I said, there ain't no way I'm saying that in Buddy Brew. There's just no way. He's like, no, no, I want you to do it. So if you've ever felt God speak to you or challenge you with giving or with, with ministering to someone at your co uh, work or, or helping out a family member, what do you do? None of us go, okay, God, whatever you want. What we? we fight it for a long time. And so I fought it and fought it for about 30 minutes just sitting there as they're just doing their own thing. And I'm sitting on the other side. They have no clue. I'm in this like war back and forth in myself going, should I tell her? Should I not tell her? There's no way. So I pack up my stuff, getting ready to leave. And as before I walk out that door, God's like, you better tell her what I just said. So I felt this pool, and I was like, I got to do it. So I turn around, I go up to the girls, like, hey, girls, I don't want to interrupt y'all's coffee, hang out, but just wanted to say hi. And so there's, you know, we're saying hi, what are y'all doing? Just hanging out. And then it's kind of like a little small talk for a second, and then I was like, okay, I've got to say this. I was over there, and I was praying for you, and while I was praying for you, I just felt God say this, and he wanted to say right to you, Kara, and I just want you to know that God says you're about to have a child. And I said this, and like her face just like got like wide-eyed. And she starts bawling, crying. She goes, Aaron, you have no clue. We're here having coffee because I am so discouraged. Because for months and months and months we've been trying, and I just we needed someone to encourage me. And so we've been sitting here the entire time we've been sitting here. We've been just talking about how, you know what? God's good. He's faithful. He's going to come through. And then out of nowhere, you walk up and say this word over us and just mess them up. So I walk away where they're going, well, that's pretty cool. You know, that's neat. And then... <laughs> And then I see him a few weeks later. I'm like, hey. And they're like, no, no, nothing. <laughs> the month goes by. Another month goes by. Eventually, it's to a point where I'm like, I see him in the auditorium. And I'm kind of like walking the other way around. <laughs> Come on, I'm a human too. And I'm like, they're going to stone me. <laughs> like, until it's about two and a half months later. It was the very first text, I believe. they. Uh, no, it wasn't the first text. I was walking in our downtown location before service ever even started. And I was just checking out the location. And they pulled me aside. And they go, Aaron, we haven't told anybody. We just found out, but we're pregnant right now. And I remember just, I, I'm not even a crier. And I was just bawling and crying. Oh, thank God I was right <laughs> for <this laughs> one time. And it was just a few weeks ago, I got the text. And I was one of the very first to get the text A little Joseph who is now born, who is a gift from God. Come on, give God some praise for that, amen? And, and I don't say it to let you be impressed. I say it to say that that's the Holy Spirit. That's the power we're supposed to operate in. Not that you're just giving random messages to people, but your life is supposed to be marked with supernatural events in your life. We have God, of the, the God of the universe is living inside of us. We should be walking in victory over sin, power over the enemy, the idea that there's nothing too great for our God. We should walk bold and courageous because he left us not alone as orphans, but he gave us the Holy Spirit. And because that is the Holy Spirit is in our life, we can have power and victory in Jesus' name. Can we give God some praise today for that? Amen. And you can experience them in your life today. So despite your denominational background, despite your upbringing, I want you to open yourselves up in the last three minutes we have together.
to a prayer that I pray often. I've shared it here before, maybe a couple of years ago. I'm going to give you the prayer right here. It's a prayer I try to pray every single day, and it simply starts like this. Holy Spirit, convict me. Why would you ask the Holy Spirit to do that? That's what he says. He says he convicts the world what is good and what is not. Why? Because I want to get better. There's things I'm doing that's hurting my life and in ways that I'm acting that's hurting my marriage and things I'm doing that's, that's messing up my ministry. God, bring it to the surface. I'm telling you, it's a great prayer for you to pray. Listen, the Holy Spirit does not convict you to shame you. He convicts you to change you. And, and there's a change that needs to happen in your life. And if you listen to your teacher, you'll get a little bit better every single day when you ask the Holy Spirit to convict you. But don't stop there. Ask him now to, oh, there we go. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a verse. We'll get to it later. Change me. Change me. Now, Holy Spirit, don't just convict me, but now change me so that I can be better. Like, show me the path. Show me the, the decision I need to make in that relationship. Show me the decision I need to make in my finances, in my health. God wants to change your, your, the trajectory of your life. A lot of you guys, if you keep going down the path you're going, you're going to end up dead and disconnected for the purpose of God for your life. But you can change, and the Holy Spirit can help you. And here, one of your ways that you can change is you can get plugged in here and go through next steps. It's a path that I think the Holy Spirit takes people on to help them discover their potential in God. And the third one is simply this, Holy Spirit, not just change me and convict me, but consume me. And I think it's a prayer you need to pray every single day. God, consume me. In other words, less than me. Here's a good question for your life right now. How much room is in your life for God? Maybe, maybe you're just too full of yourself or your ideas or your agendas, and no wonder God's not flowing through your life. But if you'll empty yourself and say, Holy Spirit, fill me with you, You'll be shocked what will happen every single day. The Apostle Paul says it this way, and I love this verse. I preach on it all the time. He says, don't get drunk on wine. Hey, by the way, good idea. Don't do that. And you know why? Because here's what alcohol does. Alcohol is a cheap substitute for what God can offer. So alcohol is your way of going, I'm going to have something control my life, but it's not going to lead you to the destination that God has for you. But God wants to control your life. So he gives an example here today. He says, don't have a cheap substitute. Don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, here's what you should do. Be filled with God. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, so it's not just alcohol. Some of you are just full of yourself and full of your own agendas and filled with drugs and filled with your own thing. And today I'm going to ask you at the end of the service, in the last few seconds we have together, empty yourself and ask God, God, once again, fill me with your spirit and watch how he'll change your life. And here's why it's important for us to be spirit-filled people, because I've learned that whatever you are filled by, you're going to eventually be led by. And I want you to be led by God. He wants to bring you into a greater relationships you've ever known. He wants to give you, bring you into greater prosperity and greater blessings and greater life than you ever thought was that you ever thought was known. But you can't do it being filled with yourself. You got to be filled with God. So right now, all over this place, just close your eyes, and I want you to ask God. Many of you are disconnected from the, the Holy Spirit in your life. So we're not going to be that weird church. We're not going to have just gonna have a moment with you and God right in your seat, right there at St. Pete, right there at downtown, where you ask the Holy Spirit. First of all, start and ask him, say, Holy Spirit, convict me. Every eye closed, just ask him, say, God, convict me. Some people are living in destructive lifestyles that are keeping them from the greatness God has. And if you continue down that road, you're going to end up destroyed because the enemy's got you, but you just didn't ask God, God, show me, reveal. David says, search me, O oh God. Let them know if there's anything way in me that's not right. Ask God right now. Holy Spirit, search me. God, I can't do it for you. You gotta ask him yourself. God, Holy Spirit, convict me. What is it in my life? What do I need to change? Now ask him, say, Holy Spirit, change me. Show me the path that I need to take. Some of you, it's getting involved here at the church. Some of you, it's, it's getting some good godly friends. Some of you, it's it's, it's, it's making some lifestyle changes. Come on, make that decision right there in your seat right now. Holy Spirit, change us. We say we're submitted to you, God. We say we're submitted to you right now in this moment. And now, Holy Spirit, consume us. Come on, ask him all over this place. Say, God, fill me with you. Lord, we don't want to be drunk on wine. We don't want to be filled with some cheap substitute. We want to be filled with your spirit. Lord, I pray for Radiant Church right now at every location that they would be spirit-filled and spirit-empowered believers to be able to do what you've called them to do. Fill them right now. And as every guy's closed and every head's bowed, as you're having that moment with God and you're in here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit right now that's pulling you saying, today's your day. 
Today's your day to give your life to Christ. It's that, it's that draw in your life. You go, I don't understand it all, but I know something's tugging on my heart to give my life to Jesus, and I'm, I'm going to take his path over my own. I'm going to take his, his way. I'm going to put him in the driver's seat of my life, and if that's you today, at every location, I'm going to have you respond. And the way I'm going to have you respond is in just a second. I'm going to have you raise your hand, wave it at me, put it right back down. You go, Aaron, today's my day. I'm giving my life to Jesus. I'm giving control over to him. On the count of three, if that's you, let you raise your hand. Ready? One, two, three. All over this place. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So many people. Just pray this prayer. Say, God, I give you my life. I give you my heart. I surrender it to you right now. now I'm telling this. Say, Jesus, be my Lord. and Be my Savior. For the rest of my life, I'm going to follow you. Now, Holy Spirit, fill me with you so that I can be led into the life you've always wanted me to live. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody that believes it says, amen. amen. Can we celebrate for probably the dozen people right here in this room? Oh, come on, Radiant Church. That's a big deal. Amazing. We celebrate you guys. So if you're one of those that just made a decision, I want you to know that was the Holy Spirit that pulled on your heart. That was the Holy Spirit that just challenged you to make that change. Watch what he does with your life as you continue to follow him. If you made that decision, once you take that connection card, check on there, I committed my life to Christ. And we want to help you by sending you some resources and some information about how you can better follow Jesus. And we're going to end this service right now by worshiping God with our generosity. And let me tell you, generosity to me is, is I give my tithe to God. And then above and beyond that, that's always what I'm praying. Saying, God, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? And that's why I love living a supernatural life with my finances. You watch how God will bless your life when you're spirit-led, even in your giving. So you give here in the service. I want you to know it makes a difference. Every baptism, every decision for Christ is, is partly because you give and you're making a difference for all of eternity. Let me pray over you. Lord, bless this church. They give so faithfully to you. Here, they give it online. They give it through text giving. And I pray that you would bless them. Thank you for the life change that's already happened today. And we know that you are just getting started. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody that believes it says... Amen.